five. This was, you know, I just wrote this book called Becoming Raw. My writing partner, Basanto, Lena, and myself. And I, I didn't ever think I would write a book on raw nutrition. Because it wasn't something that I was passionate about. But I can tell you, I learned more writing that book. You can imagine. It was amazing because there's so much science that isn't known. And nobody had ever really looked through the literature, I think, in the detail that we did. We contacted researchers all over the world to try to figure some of this stuff out. <clears throat> when it comes to enzymes, um, the myth is, is that, well, more, if, if you're in nutrition, uh, I, I learned something about enzymes and nutrition, and I'll tell you what I learned. I learned there are absolutely no consequence to who we have whatsoever. Zero. They're digested in the stomach, and they're there for plants, period. They didn't even read one single paragraph in our textbook. It, that's where mainstream is at with enzymes. And you've got the raw food community. Enzymes are the most important things in food. Right? Nothing, nothing is more important than enzymes. And, uh, and it's kind of interesting. It's, the two worlds could not be further apart on this particular topic. Just couldn't be. And so it, it was fascinating to try to get to the bottom of this. I wrote a whole chapter in Becoming Raw on this topic. And it was extremely interesting. You know, I took um, some of the claims in the raw food movement. Uh, they quoted the biggest enzyme researchers in the world. Michael Gardner from the UK, Stephen Rothman from the US. And so I took the quotes. They said, this research proves such and such. And I went to the researchers and they said, does your research prove this is what is being said? And they, I had wonderful correspondence with these people. And I got to the bottom of, of I think we, we really reached a, a reasonable balance here. <coughs> so, well, <coughs> excuse me, my voice is going. Uh, enzymes, <coughs> enzymes are health supportive in at least two ways. And this was a shock to me. Can you still hear me at the back? Okay, this was an absolute shock. Plant enzymes actually help to convert certain phytochemicals to their bioactive metabolites. I had no clue before I started researching this stuff. Secondly, food enzymes actually can aid in the digestive process a little bit. Okay, not a huge amount, but a little bit. <clears throat> so first enzyme is called myrosinase. Myrosinase is an enzyme found in cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli. It converts something called glucosinolates to bioactive metabolites called isothiocyanates like sulforaphane. If you've heard of sulforaphane in broccoli sprouts, for example. Isothiocyanates are highly prized for their ability to induce phase two enzymes. These are extremely potent anti-cancer agents. Phase two enzymes literally help you take toxic carcinogens and turn them into water-soluble compounds so you can get rid of them. Okay. <clears throat> very, very important. So here's how it looks. Glucosinolates require myrosinase to become isothiocyanates. And the interesting thing, of course, is that enzymes are destroyed by heat. So as soon as you cook these vegetables, you destroy your myrosinase. Okay. Now, it doesn't go from 100% in this to 0% in a steamed broccoli. The more you cook, the more destruction. Okay. And the second is alanase. Alanase is an enzyme found in allium vegetables like garlic and onions. It converts all organosulfur compounds, allium to allicin, and uh, allicin is antimicrobial, antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, lipid lowering, uh, antiarthritic, and it has anti-cancer activities as well. So here we have Allen going to Allison with the help of Allenase, which of course is destroyed by cooking. Okay. <clears throat> so when you look at enzymes in the, in the digestive process, food enzymes have some interesting roles. Okay, first of all, when you chew food, you release enzymes. Okay, so that's the first thing. 
The first thing, so if you blend food in a blender or a food processor, you're releasing enzymes. So digestion, what do, en what do enzymes do? <coughs> do you know what enzymes do? They're kind of like your garden shears. There's great big ones, there's smaller ones, and there's little tiny pruning shears. And they take big proteins and break them up into smaller and smaller fragments until they're just the little amino acids that you can absorb. They take big starches and they break them up until they're tiniest components, until they're glucose or you know, a simple sugar so that they can be absorbed. Same with fats. They're the things that break you down. So that process begins when you chew or when you, when you blend. <clears throat> now this I was fascinated with. You know, your stomach has sort of two compartments. It's the proximal end and the distal or lower end. And the proximal end is like a holding tank. It's like a holding tank. Food rests there for 20 to 60 minutes. And guess what? The pH is 4.5 to 5.8. Perfect pH for enzyme function. Perfect. <clears throat> In, and then once you reach the distal part of the stomach, the pH is closer to 2, and the enzymes are not usually destroyed. However, if they come with viable organisms, like in a fermented or cultured food, they may survive. Like in sort of yogurt and, and in sauerkraut and in those kinds of foods where you've used a bacterial culture. Okay. So that's kind of interesting as well. Now, so what does that mean in terms of overall digestion? The contribution of plants is probably relatively minor in overall digestion. And just so, you, just so you can understand that, there was a study done, you know, we, we haven't looked at this much, but in one milliliter of saliva, you produce about 200 units of enzymes. In a, one liter of carrot juice, you produce about 20. There's about 20. So it's just our bodies produce massive amounts of enzymes to handle the foods coming in. Plants produce enzymes for their survival. That's what they're there for. Do you know what enzymes do in plants? You've got a seed. They are there to help that seed become a viable plant. Okay? So when the seed is soaked and or put in soil, you know, begins to germinate, guess what the enzyme does? It starts to re release the storage forms of nutrients in that food so that the plant can use those nutrients for its growth. So it releases the proteins and the carbohydrates and the fats so that the plant can grow. And that's what they're there for. They're not there for human nutrition. They're there for plant survival. So there are some really exciting things about enzymes, like myrosinase and alanase, and a little bit of assistance with digestion at some points along the digestive tract. But the reality is probably a little less than what some people would hope that they that, that that was true. Okay? Somewhere between the two worlds.